Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cole Anderson. Uh, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button below if you like this channel. And also uh, consider becoming a financial supporter as well. You can do so either at www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist or you can use my PayPal link in the description box below to make a one-time donation. Any support is much appreciated and will help me to be able to focus more on this channel and keep bringing you content week after week. Today's post is the first in what I hope will be many more posts of works by currently active composers. Uh, Graham Twist is actually one of my viewers. That's very wonderful. He always leaves very kind comments after each of my videos, never seems to miss one. And I was very interested to discover after making contact with Graham that he is in fact an accomplished composer as well, with quite a few beautiful pieces out there recorded on YouTube, mostly for the organ, but also there's some piano works as well. And it's really lovely stuff, so I include some links in the description box also if you want to hear some more of his works. And Graham apparently only seriously began to dedicate himself to composition very recently during his retirement, although he has been an amateur musician all throughout his life. And sometimes Graham will actually write pieces as little gifts for musicians that he really enjoys listening to and interacting with. And so I was really thrilled that he decided to write a piece for me as well, this short prelude called Reflection. Graham himself will probably insist that his style as a composer is entirely derivative. If you listen to him, he's totally unoriginal. Um, I'm not so certain of that myself. Um, even if that was the case, though, I think it's wonderful not to be too concerned about whether or not one's own works stand up to the greatest pieces ever written. One should feel free to make music and just share it with others. Uh, just the act of doing so is already an enormously beneficial behavior for society. Oftentimes I wonder how many charming and lovely pieces have been lost to history because an accomplished performer didn't feel worthy of sharing their creative instinct with the world, simply because they didn't feel that they could match Beethoven or Mozart or Tchaikovsky or whoever it might have been. But from that perspective, isn't the music of Fritz Kreisler, for example, just as worthwhile in its own way as the music of Mozart or Beethoven? Um, some might say no, but to me, it's really apples and oranges. Yeah, I wouldn't want the world to be without Fritz Kreisler's music, even if it doesn't match the complexity and variety of someone like Beethoven. There's still a lot of worth there. Certainly you can hear the influence of a certain kind of romantic 20th century English musical tradition in Graham's music. So in particular, if I had to think of another composer to liken his writing to, probably someone like Roger Quilter would come immediately to mind. As far as I'm concerned, that's quite a compliment. I, Roger Quilter wrote all those wonderful um, song arrangements based on Shakespeare and other great English poets. And he had a very kind of relaxed, luxuriant harmonic style, which reminds me right away of Graham's approach in this prelude. But when I started looking at Graham's piece, there was something that just jumped out at me right away about his pianistic writing, um, which also informs the music. You can immediately tell that this is a composer who no doubt is an organist. And the reason for this is because Graham asks for very precise finger legato in many passages, in particular a passage like this. So in a passage like this, frequent finger substitutions are necessary to ensure a perfectly legato line. And this, of course, is essential on the organ, where it's impossible to sustain notes with anything other than your fingers. So you might ask, why do we need that necessarily on the piano? Don't we have a damper pedal, which removes the need for holding things down with the fingers alone? Well, in reality, it's actually not quite so simple as that. Ensuring a finger legato not only greatly assists in creating the illusion of a perfectly legato line, but it also allows for a much greater variety of sound. If you don't rely on the pedal to connect all legato lines, this allows you to get a great deal more contrast between this kind of luxuriant pedaled sound and a much drier non-pedaled sound. And this is not inconsiderable, since as soon as you press the pedal down to raise the dampers off all the strings, you get a whole host of sympathetic vibrations from the strings which are not 
being actually sounded. And this makes a great deal of difference in the total sound world that you're creating. And I've long noticed this in great pianists. The pianists who are more demanding about finding legato fingerings whenever feasible inevitably have a much more varied sound world that they are able to create. Of course, it's an advantage on the piano that we can release notes and still have them sounding on the pedal. Obviously, we can get great effects with widely spaced notes this way that can give the illusion that the pianist has far more than just two hands. And even from a practical perspective, knowing when to release notes can be enormously helpful when it comes to conquering purely mechanical difficulties. The more you hold notes down, the more fatigued you'll tend to get in very technically demanding writing. So I really appreciate it when a composer like Graham writes passages like these because he's actually inviting the performer in a way to make use of the tonal variety that's possible on the piano. So I hope I've done that sufficiently in this performance. Uh, beyond that, I've also put an analysis to accompany the music. The piece has a very free, improvised seeming, flexible kind of arch structure underlying it. Um, so that will hopefully explicate that for the viewer as well. So I hope you do enjoy the piece, and I hope it sounds like you were imagining it would, Graham. Um, thank you again very much for writing the piece for me. I'm quite, quite moved that you chose to dedicate a piece to me. It's actually the first piece that's ever been dedicated to me to perform, so I'm very pleased to introduce it to a wider audience. So also on a side note, uh, my apologies to anyone who tried to tune in to hear my performance of the Shostakovich cello sonata last Saturday. There was a bit of a mishap with the live stream that made it come up as unavailable to several viewers. So sorry about that. Um, thank you also to anyone who tuned in to my concert with Everett Rutledge, the clarinetist. Uh, it was nice to hear from people who had seen that and enjoyed the performance. It's possible that there may be another live stream concert this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time once again. It's a concert I'm doing with a violinist. Um, the big piece on the program is the Strauss Violin Sonata, which is a great, wonderful, late romantic work by the young Strauss. If that concert does end up being live streamed, I will post a link in the description box here, and I'll try to make certain that it really works. So anyway, though, thanks for watching this video, and hope to see you next time as well.